Sean, do you think Zack Snyder needs to change the trajectory of his career or do you think he's doing fine because he has his fan base? Oh no, I think he desperately needs to change the trajectory of his career. Where I, I think that he is really hurting his brand right now and losing credibility from a bunch of people like myself. People that were not like that, not the weird hashtag version of the fan base. We're just movie fans that also love Zack Snyder because he has a distinct style. I love Zack Snyder because you know you're watching a Zack Snyder film. Love it or hate it, he's spicy food. That's what I love about him. And a bunch of his movies are very much my kind of thing. And then, you, you know, the internet people, that are the cult of Zack Snyder. That's something different. But people like me that are actual movie fans that buy tickets to movies, I think this whole... Rebel Moon two cuts thing is an enormous misstep. Such a gigantic miscalculation on whatever those conversations were. It was a bad idea. And he's going out there saying all of these things in interviews that I think are only burning bridges. They're only making him look bad. Your point of view is the most important thing there is. Like your, you the prism, that the world kind of reflects through is everything. That's your currency. I kept coming back to it because I really had something to say about the sort of tropes of, of sci-fi. I And so I wrote this very extreme R-rated bizarro sci-fi movie to test it. Right. But now you've gotten the earnest version first. I'll deconstruct my own movie with the with the director's cut. So that's hysterical. It's a closed loop. I just saw Rebel Moon Part Two. There's nothing in there that's safe. Yeah. And I saw the PG-13. Yeah. <laughs> PG-13 is a joke. And making it seem like maybe he doesn't have integrity because he's promoting something that is actually contrary to what he actually believes where he, he's, he's overtly making yeah, making this PG-13 version for them while saying at the same time, the best thing that you can do is be true to yourself. And he's like burning other studios for their focus groups while praising the Netflix version of that. I think that is only burning bridges and exhausting people. This is such a miscalculation. But um, I, I think you have a scenario where because he became such a brand he could get Netflix to go, here's $80 million to make whatever zombie movie you want to make. Here's $160 million to make a, a pair, but also kind of like a quadrilogy of Rebel Moon movies. He's getting them to throw money at him. And I think that's about to end. They're, they're not going to tell him yes the way that they did before. Even look at it. Where are, uh, where are all of the announced Army of the Dead follow-ups. There's supposed to be like an animated movie in Ar Army of the Dead 2. There's all supposed to be all this other stuff. We got the one that was already shot before Army of the Dead came out, Army of Thieves. It's dead. Nothing. And then he's saying he wants to do six Rebel Moon movies w w without saying too much. Part two, if you haven't seen it, it does end with a very much sets up the sequel. Overtly sets up a sequel. And I just don't know that we're going to get any of this at the current trajectory because these are such miscalculations. And I think he needs to go step back and realize, OK, I like to write. I'm not as good of a writer as I am a visual director. Even people that are my fans, they, they like it when I direct other people's scripts more than when I do my own and get back to some of that and working with strong writers I think he needs to move away from just overly convoluted, gigantic scripts and get back to more straightforward, simple stories. He needs something else that is a much more of a, a just overt success, where I think right now he's kind of had the Army of the Dead, maybe more disappointment than just overt disaster. Rebel Moon 1 and 2 feel like a disaster for his brand. And I, I think so many people are like, I don't even want to check out the R-rated version because these are just so blah. And they're just annoyed by it. They're annoyed that it was designed, it was manufactured controversy or whatever. So I I think he, I think that he really needs to, to rework something there uh, and redirect his career. Like if, if it was, if I was giving him advice, I, I would tell him to maybe adapt a graphic novel again that's more straightforward 
something like what he did with 300, not not doing another 300, but something like that and get back to adapting a, an established story that's very visual, very visceral. Do that again or work on take work with someone else's script that's more straightforward. Or if he's got an idea for something, say, here's my story and pass it along to someone else the way that George Lucas did with a, you know Empire Strikes Back. I think that's what he needs to do. But I, I think he absolutely needs a tr- change of trajectory. That's just, for, just me personally as the guy that very recently, within the last six months, was very excited for Rebel Moon. And I'm just like, oh, boy, this is a mess. He is not saying things in interviews that put him in a good light or Netflix in a good light. He he needs to change some things. Most of these clips are pulled from my Patreon live streams. I do about six live streams every single month for $2 per month, $20 per year. You can get access to all the exclusive videos and live streams for $5 per month. You get your name on my end card. At the top tier, you get a 30 minute video chat with me each month. The link down below in the description has more information.